Hey everyone and welcome to Mitch in the Kitch. Today we are doing one of my absolute favorites. You probably could have guessed it by now. We're making pizza. It's really easy. You know, I think a common misconception of pizza is that it's difficult to do at home. I want to show you just how easy it is. I want to show you, you know, how to stretch it. Um, you know, you can use a rolling pin. I, I use a rolling pin all the time, but there is something kind of fun using your hands, you know, kneading the dough. Uh, I really enjoy that. Uh, the dough recipe is from Serious Eats. I've talked about it on my blog. I'll link the recipe again. The reason I like this one, it's their Neapolitan dough, is because it's four ingredients. It's bread flour, it's salt, it's yeast, it's water. It sounds that simple and it is that simple. Now, as you can see, we've got the rest of the fun stuff for the pizza. We're going pepperoni and mushroom. Uh, fresh mozzarella, some parm for the end, a little bit of goat cheese, sneaky ingredient. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. A little bit of basil, not too much, some red pepper flake, and then our tomato sauce. We're just gonna go in. I usually start on low. Just gonna go down. All right, so now we're at the bottom. These guys are pretty much all blended together. So I'm gonna get it really smooth and make a mess. <laughs> All right, so now you have tomato sauce, not whole tomatoes. It wasn't too much of a mess, just a couple splashes. And you'll see when I do this, you know, I don't like a lot of sauce on the pizza. You could definitely use any canned sauce that you want. If it's in the fridge, it's easy to have. These are just tomatoes, so I really like the simplicity of it. And you're getting a little bit of the acidity, that tomato flavor, but it's not gonna be overpowering. So that's why I enjoy using these. And then once I use it for pizza, it's in the fridge, use it for sauce, pasta, whatever else you need. Always good to have on hand. Okay, so in terms of the hardware, this is where it gets a little bit specialty. So this is the baking steel. I'll open it up for you. Now this particular product is their baking steel griddle and their mini version. So this side is completely flat. You can see uh, great for the oven, great for pizzas, great for doughs. Flip it over and it's a griddle. So it's got this groove where it catches fat. So if you want to cook really anything, this is kind of like a cast iron, but better, honestly. Um, so I have a similar product in the oven. It's scorching hot right now, so I can't show you. But the reason I like this over a traditional stone is that this radiates heat at like 20 times the output of stone. Don't quote me on that. I just know it's a lot higher and I might be exaggerating, but we're going to use the broiler method. So the broiler method means we've got the oven on as hot as it goes, currently 550. Once we start getting the pizza going, we're gonna to switch to broil. So the rack is two thirds of the way up. This thing has been preheating for like an hour now. And I'll flip it over for you. So it's sitting here. So it's got a ton of stored energy. This is a lot of energy. Gonna cook the pizza from the bottom. Switch to broil, and now broil is gonna cook the pizza from the top. But this is gonna radiate a lot of heat. Broil is gonna radiate a lot of heat. We're gonna cook it evenly top to bottom. And pizza done, four minutes. All right, I've got two pizza peels here and you'll see why in just a little bit. Uh, the second one is gonna really help us get the pizza off the peel into the oven. That's called the launch. For now, we're gonna roll the pizza out. Uh, it's in a little container. You see very well floured. This is a sticky dough. I mean, you can see all the bubbles. Uh, you can see it doesn't really wanna get out of there, so you gotta give it a shake. But a nice sticky dough and those bubbles, that's what makes it kind of that Neapolitan style. It's got a little bit more chew to it. So you can see sticky which means we gotta get it into flour. Flour is gonna be that barrier that protects us from the dough sticking. And now you're just kind of working it out with your fingers. Uh, you wanna get it to a level that's thin enough to kind of stretch it. When it's that thick, it's a little bit difficult to stretch. And so this first stage, you're just kind of pushing, getting it broken down. And now one of the keys, I, I screwed this up the first few times. You know, this dough is sitting in the fridge for a while. You just, oh, it's pizza time. Pull it out, start working. It's not gonna work. So when the dough's cold, it's gonna seize up on you, much like a steak that's really hot, that protein's gonna seize up. This cold dough is gonna seize up on you. So you wanna let it get to room temperature, uh, let it sit out for a couple hours. You know, if it's sitting on there room temperature for longer than that, that's gonna be okay. But it's gonna allow us to pull it. We're at the point where I can pick it up and basically just start pulling the sides. And now I'm letting gravity do some work here. So you can see, I'm kinda grasping around uh, the side where the uh, crust would be. There's really no wrong way to do it. I mean, even if it pulls apart and breaks, you can still pinch it back together. It's going to be okay. That happens all the, all the time for me, honestly. And you can see, you know, some sections are a little thinner than others. 
Um, again, that's okay. You can have one part that's crunchier, one part that's chewier. If we want to get super fancy, we can, let's see if this works. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I can kind of do it. So this is essentially what you're doing like this. It just looks cooler and you're kind of using that it's either centripetal or centrifugal force to, you know, throw the dough and then it spins out and starts pulling. Honestly, just do this, just kind of keep going in a circle. It's going to work just as well for you. Not quite as scary as throwing it. So I like to go thin on the crust uh, with the gluten. The gluten is what's going to, you know, help kind of pull that dough back together. So if you go thin and kind of push it to its limits, it will bounce back on you. So as much as you pull it out, it's gonna be uh, a little bit smaller when it's actually ready to assemble. All right, so we're getting pretty close and what I wanna do, okay, so real quick, I just popped it right there. No big deal, pinch it, all good. Nothing to worry about if that happens. So the dough is stretched out to where I want it to be. So now I'm gonna get my second peel. And the second peel, I'm gonna put semolina flour on it. This is my little guy, semolina flour. It only comes out when I'm making pizza. You can make pasta out of it, you can make whatever. But this flour is gonna be a little bit more like little balls, like little ball bearings. And it's gonna allow that pizza to get off into the oven. And so a very thin layer, you know, some people would use like cornmeal potentially. Uh, if you get pizza from, you know, a good place on the bottom, sometimes you got a little bit of these kind of stuck to it. Uh, that's the semolina that sticks to the dough and as it goes into the oven, it, it sticks at the bottom. So a nice light dusting, uh, nothing crazy. Okay, time to transfer the dough. Now I do want to shake off all this excess flour. Uh, you want to get as much off as you can. You don't want, you know, kind of that raw flour on it. You could use like a pastry brush. You could use whatever you want to get it off. Whatever you do, it'll be okay. Another chance to give it one final stretch. And we're ready. One last stretch, and we're down. That's our pizza. As you can see, it's sliding really smooth, and we're gonna keep doing that throughout the process. All right, so it's at this point in the process where I actually wanna get that oven switched to broil. It'll only take, you know, three to five minutes to assemble this. So it's the perfect time. That baking steel's been preheating for forever. It's super hot. It's still gonna get heat from the broiler, but I wanna flip that now to give the broiler the right amount of time to preheat. You can see how it's at that top two thirds of the oven. All right, time to assemble. You know, you can keep kind of like pulling it and stretching it a bit. Um, I like to use a little bit of oil around the perimeter. Again, this is just avocado oil, nothing crazy. You could use olive, but once again, this is gonna cook, and so you're kind of gonna lose that good olive oil flavor. And the reason I'm doing this is just to reinforce a nice golden crust. Uh, you know, that oil will really get that crust going for us. Uh, next up is our tomatoes, and we parade those up. Nice and smooth. Start with a lot less than you think. Spread like all the way out there. I go pretty much all the way to the crust. You know, when eating pizza, I do enjoy, you know, a good bite of crust, but I also really enjoy pepperoni and I enjoy mushroom and cheese and all those other things. So I tend to prioritize the toppings over, you know, having a, a super thick crust. This quarter inch, half inch is all you're gonna need. Uh, next up, gonna go with some red pepper flake. Just a little bit of a pinch on the bottom. You can always add it to the top. You can you know, serve it for your guests. I personally love basil. Uh, we got a few pieces that we're gonna stick underneath. Uh, I just think it brings a, a little basil kick to it. You know, the next ingredient might surprise you. If you're not a fan of the ingredient, uh, that's okay. You know, my wife's not a huge fan of it, like raw or in other applications. She loves it on this pizza. Uh, it's goat cheese. It's kind of got that tanginess. It's got that creaminess. We're gonna put it in next and it's gonna cook down and it's gonna get a little more creamy, a little less funky. You can see we're not gonna use too much of it, you know, everything in moderation. And so the goat cheese, little bitty pieces, you know, you don't want those huge chunks. If it is just you and you love goat cheese, I mean, go wild. Uh, again, that's the cool thing with pizza. You can make the crust as big or as little as you want. You can make it for a group, you can make it for yourself. It's like the ultimate customizable food. Whenever, you know, that question of, oh, you could eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? To me, it's pizza because pizza is ever changing. Breakfast pizza, dessert pizza, everything else. Pizza is the way to go. All right, at this point, I want to add a little bit of salt because tomatoes need salt. 
The crust could use a little bit of salt. The goat cheese, just a little bit. And we're just, as with everything, you know, you see me cook, it just reinforces the flavors. Another key, you know, keep that thing shaking, keep it moving. The worst thing that can happen is it starts to stick. You're not able to get it off. Bad launch is not good business, so make sure you're shaking it. Uh, next up, we're going mozzarella cheese. Fresh mozzarella, you know, we've got some slices. You got the whole stuff, you can pull it apart. Um, you know, slices relatively thin. We tend to like using the fresh mozzarella. We like using fresh cheese in general. I mean, there's just something to fresh cheese that's better, I think, than the, the bag stuff, the pre-shredded. You know, they add that kind of weird stuff on the exterior to make sure it doesn't clump up. Uh, fresh cheese is the way to go. So if you can use it, I think you'll enjoy it. And again, a very tiny amount of salt. That mozzarella cheese is unseasoned. And so it seems like it's going over the top. I promise it's not gonna be like this super salty pizza. Next up, let's go pepperoni. So these guys, I just find at the local grocery store. They're big pieces. I cut them into these triangles. Try to get more pepperoni on the pizza and also more edges to brown up, to crisp up. Uh, I like that nice crispy pepperoni bite. And now these guys, as they cook, they're gonna shrink up. You know, they're gonna lose some of the fat. Uh, the proteins are gonna, you know, tighten up a little bit on you. So if you love pepperoni, you know, feel free to overlap. You know, when it's all said and done, it's probably gonna be just right for you. And I love pepperoni, and this is the way to go. And now another, you know, pizza topping thing. You could do the cheese on top. You could do kind of any order you want. I've just gotten into pepperoni on top. I, I like the pepperoni crisping up. I think if it's covered up by cheese, Maybe it doesn't get quite as crispy, and so that's why I like it on top. Again, another shake, make sure we're doing all right. From here, we're gonna add some mushroom. And now a cool thing is the mushroom is gonna kind of soak in some of what the pepperoni gives off, and so it's gonna get flavored and seasoned from the pepperoni. Pizza's awesome, man. Everything shares with each other, makes a nice tasty bite. All right, so that's our pizza, fully dressed again. One more little shake. So we're gonna be able to get it into the oven. The launch is gonna be successful. Let's head over to the oven. We got that broiler on. I'm excited to get this in. All right, we're at the oven. Broiler's on high. It's been preheating at 550 before that for at least an hour. We're ready to go. Pizza sliding. Just for you guys, we're gonna go lefty. And make sure you get back in there and you kind of shake it, let it come off and pull it away. And there you have it. Nice launch pizza. Getting the pizza off. Oh yeah, you see a nice crust there. Our pizza is fresh out of the oven. Gonna get some Parmesan cheese on top. Parmesan Reggiano, cheese king of the universe. I like using this microplane because it gets these nice fine pieces. Kind of looks like snow coming over the top, melts into it. Really pretty. I'll stop there. And as it goes, you'll see the parm just kind of keeps melting into the pizza. You could do some basil, you know, you could do some of those red pepper flakes, uh, whatever else you want. For now, this is how we're gonna do it. And now time to slice and eat. Ooh, hear that crunch? That's a good crunch right there. So here we go, crunch and crunch. Okay, so now it's time to finally dig in. I'm actually salivating here, that's how much I love pizza. I eat it all the time, it still gets me. Let's get a nice piece going. Yeah, this is a really good crust. You can see it's kind of nice and firm on the bottom. You, you got the melty cheese right there, so the cheese is melted perfect. Let's go. Mm. Oh man, there's nothing like pepperoni pizza. I mean, it's one of the best things in the world. I love it so much. As you can see, you know, it's got that crunch to it. It's not really drooping when you pick it up. Back here, the crust, you're still able to get well, runny cheese. That's always awesome. You're kind of fluffier, chewier crust. All right, so it's got chewiness. It's got some texture with the crunch. A little bit of everything, best of both worlds. Let's give it another try. Mm. That is so good. I know you guys love pizza as much as I do. You know, I still get Domino's. I still get all the other stuff. So making it at home is really easy. I hope I was able to share with you just how easy it is. You shouldn't be intimidated. You should definitely want to give this a try. Uh, I know you love it. You know, if you already make pizza at home, you do something a little different than me, please let me know. I'm always searching for the perfect pizza. 
I still haven't made that quite yet, so let me know. And if you do give this a try for the first time, I'd also love to hear just how it went. You know, I remember my first time making pizza. It was quite a joyous uh, ride there. Uh, so please let me know. If there's any other suggestions, I'm here for it. Let me know in the comments. See you next time.